So the first real important concept that I want to talk about is this thing called the bimodal curve. And all that simply means, for those of you who are not really graphically inclined, is that when we look at a lift by its force and its velocity, the speed and the amount of, uh, of, uh, power, of uh, force we actually apply, amount of strength we're using, we notice that there are two peaks in the curve. And in between the two peaks is this little valley. And what that simply means is that we are actually having that first and that second drive that I spoke about. The amount of force production in the beginning of a lift is great. The amount of force production at the end of a lift is great. Somewhere in the middle, not a huge amount of force production, not a huge amount of velocity. And that's probably that area that we call the sticking region. So we've seen this research come out back in, the, in 77 and 78. Again, uh, it was visited in 1985. Uh, in 2000, in Escamilla's uh, study, we even saw it in the deadlift as well. And then that kind of started making us believe, and this was actually well before Escamilla's work, we started realizing that, hey, all lifts seem to show this bimodal curve, whether it's, a, like I said, an arm curl or a bench press or a squat. That means inherently we are going to have some issues that we're not going to be able to, to manage, or we're going to have to figure out a better way to manage it. And that's very important in this fact, that there always will be a sticking point. There will always be two drive portions. And the way in which we perform the lift may or may not be able to help us drive through the sticking region, as I'll show you, and also uh, has parameters in terms of where the force generation occurs, which is, of course, very important for maybe figuring out athletic performance. And I like bringing it back to that squat, because as a strength coach, and uh, I had my athletes always just intuitively, I just said, you know, right to the ground. Every single one of them had the perfect squat technique all the way to the ground, every time with their butt, you know, touching the ground kind of thing. And now I'm thinking to myself, when in sport do we ever get in that kind of position? Maybe a, maybe a catcher on a baseball team is down in that kind of position and needs to be able to explode out of the bottom to uh, throw out a man at second, you know, running into second. But other than that, I don't see too many sports where this uh, deep squat is necessary. Yet as a powerlifter, of course, if you don't deep squat, you're not squatting at all, as far as I'm concerned.